in one of his functions that he has been given by the president to coordinate development partners and look for investors. Why should the deputy president go to look for foreign investors when his own children can invest at home? Children of many other people I know hide their money in Dubai and Cayman Islands. They don't want to invest here. What crime have the children of the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya committed by borrowing money from a bank to buy a hotel and spur tourism, create employment, and spur business within the local environment? These boys are so demoralized. Asking me, Dad, why? Didn't you advise us that it's a crime to be your children? That we have no life of our own? That we shouldn't invest in our own country? And if we dare to invest, we should do it at our proxy so that we conceal our identity. Are we criminals by virtue of being your children? That's a question my children are asking me. What crime can children of Kenya commit to borrow money from a bank and start an enterprise and employ people and spur tourism? How unfair can a country be to its young population to condemn them for being enterprising? I'm being told by the National Assembly that I need to be impeached from office because my children have dared to borrow money, buy property in their name and invest in their own country. And for that, their father should be sent home. I won't conclude by Karate Farm Limited. This is a farm I founded in 2001 with my wife, Pastor Dockers. And it runs our farms, it runs our dairy farm in Nyeri that is doing very well. I'm making a million shillings or so every month. And I sell calves and it's doing very well. And my farm now has become a model farm for the local farmers. We are doing chicken, we are doing rabbits, we are doing sheep. Again, nobody has told me what crime has currently Farm committed. Technical Supplies and Services, Kenya Limited, a company I founded in 2001. I did business during the Kibaki era. When things got very bad, I stopped doing business with it. It has not done business for the last eight years. And of course, in the two years I've been deputy president. I want proof tomorrow, the National Assembly to table proof what these companies have done. They'll be very embarrassed before the people of Kenya. This will be the most shameful act ever in the history of our National Assembly. Where you go, table a motion that is so sensational, based on trash, and not a single accusation backed by evidence. I have seen an allegation that exerting influence on officials of the Ministry of Lands to issue an allotment letter to Amunyoro Investments Limited and using the fraudulently acquired documents to support a court case. Again, Amunyoro Investments Limited was never allotted any land. This parcel of land, 209 stroke 12077, Amunyoro acquired at 24 million shillings in the year 2012. The documents are there, we'll give them to you. Purchase from a third party. Somebody went to the National Land Commission and lodged a case and claimed the property belonged to him, a, senior, a former senior officer in the Ministry of Lands. And the National Land Commission made a determination, the records are there, 
that the lad belongs to Amanyoro Investments Limited. Again, he went to the High Court in the year 2022. I was not deputy president. I made my witness statement before I became deputy president. I supplied all documents before I became deputy president. I did not file any evidence as deputy president. And the matter was concluded. And the High Court issued a judgment. We'll give you the judgment that the lad belongs to Amanyoro Investments Limited. I am told that they have appealed the judgment. I invite the Honorable Mutuse to apply to be co-joined in the appeal. And then he can argue his case. This is a matter that has been adjudicated by the High Court of Kenya and made a determination. And you want to bring it to the National Assembly. The matter is alive with the Court of Appeal. It is sub duties to even discuss it in Parliament because a determination has been made. Irregular procurement of mosquito nets at a cost of 3.7 billion. I saw a huge headline from the Star newspaper, planted headline. This is the most ridiculous headline I've ever seen. And this is the most I lack a proper one and I don't want to speak in Kikuyu. <laughs> I think somebody needs to give you some water. <laughs> what uh, I want I'm looking for uh, <clears throat> I have seen that allegation. <laughs> I want to respond as follows. One, there is Andrew Murwa here has sworn an affidavit with the false allegations. And he had better be very careful. Because he has made a statement on oath. In the affidavit, he says that uh, Deputy President was involved in KEMSA 3.7 billion irregular procurement of malaria nets, either directly or through proxies. Further, Shobika Impex Limited, 